Ladies and gentlemen, Gülcin Hans, thank you very much for this order to speak here. Well, I could choose the topic. And uh, the ne neglect or even the ignoring of the psyche in governmental actions um, is actually quite an easy topic to start with because there are so many examples uh, to prove, let's say, the starting hypothesis. Well, first, psyche um, is originally uh, very interesting. The, the meaning from Greek is breathing or breath. So actually, the psyche uh, first was lifeliness. But as we understand it today, it's the entirety of feeling, of perceiving, and of thinking. Quite an important part of the human being. Now, how can that be neglected or even ignored? Now, first example. I always start with the taxes. And we heard from Jean Gap how important taxes <laughs> can be. And um, you might remember my uh, speech about, let's say, our tragedy of wealth tax. And um, the tragedy lies in the psychological part. Uh, in that, one can say, hey, dear Daniel, in this case, your income is not enough. So uh, you might even remember I put very um, easy figures uh, as a base of our tragedy. So income, one million Swiss franc, which is in the meantime more than one million euro, and tax, the tax bill is one million. So what I try to say by this first example is, um, one million income is not enough. That is the message to support your life. So, you know, that's my topic to stress the psychological part of governmental action. When I say this vis a vis the tax authorities, they say, well, you have to increase your income then. <laughs> or another answer would be, well, out of your wealth, you should create dividends. Well, if you don't, by the way, you still have to pay wealth tax even if your wealth is not producing surplus uh, because it's assets. So, I mean, the disastrous element there is if, for example, you own a Picasso, nothing else, you have an income let's say 10,000 euros a month, you have a Picasso. The Picasso is worth, let's assume half a million. Basically, you would have to cut a portion of the Picasso and give it to the tax authorities or to the government. You see how ridiculous, basically, wealth tax is. Uh, it is completely ignoring the psychological uh, element of a citizen. Second example, which brought me to the topic, it's a, it's a story hard to believe, but true. When I was about to sell my house, I informed the special tax authority, because it's called special taxes, for the so-called property gains tax. Some of you might know what it is. Uh, I informed them that I am about to sell my house and that the price is already fixed and that I will later on deliver all the investments that I had done into that property because this will be deducted from the property gain. And uh, I knew I would not have to pay taxes, by the way, because my investments into this house were bigger than the price uh, 
I was about to gain. But the funny thing now was, the next day, I received a provisional tax bill. Literally, the next day, it took 24 hours. And this tax bill was hundreds of thousands. Of course, not having my facts still about my investments into the house. I was asking, just curiosity-wise, my, my tax director, sorry to confess that I have, I employ a tax director, uh, is this normal? The next day you get the tax bill? And he said, yes, and I have a, an even juicier story. In your case, you will send your investments and uh, and I must admit, the title of the tax bill was Provisional Tax Bill. They are very good in, in the naming Provisional Tax Bill. So nothing to worry about, except this old lady. Her husband died. She wanted to leave the house, move into an apartment, was about to sell the house, did the same as I did. The next day, she received a tax bill. She had a heart attack. And uh, now, asking <laughs> what's going on here? Well, it's a complete neglect of the psychic element uh, of the citizen. When you ask them, what are you doing there? Well, sorry, this is the way we proceed. Of course, you then send in later on, but didn't you see the title, Provisional Tax Bill? Third story, COVID policy. <laughs> okay, nothing to, to say about, because you know it all. It's a complete ignoring of psychic element, but a complete stressing of physical phenomenons of the human being, wearing a mask, keeping a distance. So it's, it's pure physics, completely ignoring the psychological element of a human being, especially kids. So they look into faces uh, which wear a mask. They cannot read faces anymore. Complete ignoring uh, by governmental action. Fourth example, fiat money. Until now, I have never read in any article, anywhere, but I admit I don't read everything, so please correct me when I say that, that whenever a central bank has created whatever they have created, but you know, the amounts are unbelievable. You have the single citizen vis-a-vis. -vis. He's working for 60, 70, 80, 100,000 euros a year. He's working, or she. They're working for it. And central banks are creating enormous amounts of money by pressing a button. Nobody is talking about the demoralizing effect of such an action. Nobody. There is a complete absence of empathy, well, of course, of compassion of any sort. Well, there are some special economic situations that make it necessary, blah, blah, blah. But the majority of people, well, actually, basically everybody, is listening to it, is listening to these huge amounts that are created out of nothing, and you, yourself, have to work for your money. This demoralization effect is never a topic. Well, at least not the articles that I read. Okay, last example. Um, 
we I do not want to consume the time only by example because I easily could is in general the wasting of money as such that's why then there you read some articles well that's the taxpayers money <laughs> well governments simply don't care about sending hundreds of millions in that war sending hundreds of millions even billions to that place to console something or to solve something or uh, of course to fire war so the wasting of money as such has an unbelievable demoralizing effect on citizens now if I use the word demoralizing it's very funny it reminds me of the contrary that governments are doing in saying we are moralizing you see there is an unbelievable uh, contradiction on the one hand probably for me in my perception uh, maybe you have another hierarchy but the number one moralizing term I have in my ears is solidarity probably you have your own perception but solidarity is definitely very high so you have on the one hand moralizing arguments but subconsciously and not mentioned you have an unbelievable amazing effect of demoralization in reality so just out of this contradiction I should have come to a conclusion that we still have in front of us which was surprising for me too as I have a strange name model I like models <laughs> but this kind of models please so what I'm trying to summarize as a first step is the ignoring of the citizens psyche by governmental actions leads de facto into a process of de-civilization there are other elements that that we all know who actually uh, fires this process of civilization you know that uh, power corrupts big power corrupts big and then every economist knows monopolists tend to disconnect from rea reality so these element also uh, lead into this process of the civilization and um, one of my first hypotheses is we see an acceleration of that process now why and there I, I come to a, a breaking point uh, which surprised me as well when being aware of it because there is a break now a couple of years ago you know it in cons uh, in, in connection with COVID suddenly the psychic element becomes very important well actually becomes the key I'm sure you know what I mean the cultivation of fear fear is definitely an element <laughs> of the psyche and not of the the physical appearance of a human being so it is really stunning to realize that this fear pushing and cultivation is another and the next step of contradiction so we have so to speak that's why i tried in my model to bring in this should be the time scale basically from left to right we have a process of acceleration and escalation now this contradiction is really funny aha 
government knows exactly about the psychic element of the citizens. Ha! Huh, they know it. So, in a way, you could have argued when you listened to the discussions uh, some years ago, people always said, you know, we are still on the left side, so to speak, of the model. They are so stupid. They are unbelievably stupid. And I must admit, I could never, you know, it, it felt too arrogant. Ah, oh, they are so stupid. Because that's a contradiction itself. How can you be reigned, so to speak, by, by stupid institutions or people? So when you go to the right side and you realize they are not stupid. They didn't forget about the psychic element. They just took one out of the whole bunch, as I mentioned, out of the, the um, definition. So feeling, perceiving, thinking, they took out the fear. Now you could argue, well, fear was always in the game. And we heard it also from uh, the juridical uh, 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 point of view, of course, the punishment element was always in, in the game of law. But the big but is there. It was in the frame of the rule of law. It was clear. So sanctions could only be, you know, it, you, you mentioned very correctly, it, it's, it was law is not just a, a, a proposal. It is it should be the rule of law. So the punishment connected with the fear was always there, but in a very defined frame. And now, genie is out of the bottle. The fear as becomes part of propaganda is unlimited. Basically, propaganda is unlimited itself. You could plaster all buildings with, with billboards, with posters saying, oh, watch out, keep distance, uh, there is a virus, or whatever the, the content of that propaganda is. Now, this is really a breaking point, um, which maybe I, I will come to this point. Stupidity is turning into evil. Now, <coughs> two, let's say, examples um, that have to do with words. One is this term civil servant. I like to play on that. And the other one is the term the authorities. For a long time, I didn't know what English means the authorities. Naive German, Swiss German, I could not believe that the authorities means the Behörde. <laughs> That's a joke. So a, an agency uh, of the government. I thought, how can that be? So I, I was diving into this uh, expression authority and found out, yes, there is an inner authority in psychology and there is an outer authority authority. And inner and outer authority should correspond in a, in a range. So, basically you have two psychologically strange cases. The first one is you have big inner authority, practically no outer authority. What is this case? I would say no problem. <laughs> it, that's the good one. So you have inner authority. Uh, so your immediate social surrounding likes you. You have a positive radiation. You have a, a natural authority and people come to you and ask you for advice. That's basically what it is. Outer authority, well, I met very simple people with a lot of inner authority. 
And that is always a pleasure to have such an encounter, always. Now the second case, well, the, the extreme is no inner authority, but a lot of outer authority. And um, yeah, that's the problematic case. And that is now happening in front of our eyes. That these two elements that should somehow fit together. I mean, you, you mentioned hierarchies. I mean, in, in companies you have hierarchies. So it's the worst thing is you have a boss that is a bad boss. And then everything falls apart under this, this boss. People leave. They leave the company. And this is, so to speak, sanctioned by you know, natural law. And someday, the boss of the boss will detect we have a problem here. In government, there is no natural, let's say, cleaning of hierarchy. Not at all. Even it's forbidden to, to get rid of, of, of bad bosses. So these two elements are driving apart and apart. And I, to dramatize a bit, I would say, it has broken. So inner authority and outer authority do not have any correlation anymore. And then it's getting dangerous. That's supporting my hypothesis. We have turned from stupidity into evil. And uh, yeah, to make, to make the point to the civil servant, I, I here called it the fall of the civil servant. Uh, reminds some of us who know it of these famous interviews of Hannah Arendt. She was disappointed when interviewing Adolf Eichmann. She was disappointed. Why? Well, she expected this big, charismatic, Darth Vader kind of person. And what she met, and that's her words, I think, a very little civil servant soul. So that's the dangerous thing here. And that's why do I say the fall of the civil servant? Here we have another thing with the authority as, as here, servant. Well, this sounds very nice, doesn't it? Because the citizen thinks yeah, serving us, of course, far away from that. The fall of the civil servant is that he does not serve the sovereignty of the people, but he serves the hierarchy to the, to the other direction. You see how tricky these words are? You say, well, they, they're civil servants. Mm? To whom do they serve? And I would say they serve um, the bosses, 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 so that the, the authorities. And I'm saying this as a, as a Swiss citizen, uh, which Switzerland is so proud of direct democracy, but Switzerland had a fall as a country where suddenly the so-called souverain, which should be on top, which is the people, find themselves on the bottom of the hierarchy. And you have a normal, let's say, authoritarian system and regime as in other countries, still, by the way, with advantages. So please, uh, there are still differences. Um, now, my model as a conclusion is speaking of an acceleration of the process. And I dare um, a forecast, time-wise. <laughs> and uh, it's, it has an intuitive element, I, I agree. But my guess is in the next three to five years, we will see things that needs a lot of fantasy to see already now. 
Now again, I want to maybe underline that argument of acceleration. I think you cannot go further than breaking the last resort, which is habeas corpus. This principal element of the rule of law was attacked and actually attacked by a vast majority of governments in this world. The COVID policies basically said and says still today, you do not own your body. In a way, it is a logic further process of degeneration after all these attacks softening and in some cases even abolishing of private property laws and rights. That this expansion of power would one day emerge. It has emerged, ladies and gentlemen, and this is really the last resort. It has already fallen, so to speak, not yet to the very, very last consequence, but it was, uh, let's say, a warning and also an awakening. So, let me conclude with not a very appetite uh, provoking statement. If this spirit I tried to very briefly uh, describe would be an incarnated being, well, you, I hope you have some fantasy. You know, you, you have, so to speak, a physical appearance of what I tried to, to um, somehow describe. It would be ugly and stinking. And you would tend or to shy away, not look into that face because it's so ugly. And this is actually what many people are doing now. I think it needs a certain strength to look into the eyes of this stinking, ugly being. Now, I would say I'm confirmed by my thesis because this ugly being is, as every ugly being, hiding. It is hiding behind written words that can kill and it's hiding behind circumstances that make obedience necessary. Thank you very much. <laughs>